fact, white supremacy is why you want to repatriate. But what you may not realize is that it has also damaged Africa in ways that may derail your plans. I explained how it also affects Africa and what you can do to succeed in spite of it. A large majority of Africans, regardless of wherever on the continent or outside the continent they've schooled, are brainwashed to some extent about their history and their identity, but mostly due to no fault of theirs. They have no clue what their history the history of the ancestors is they have no clue who they are an excellent proof of this is readily seen in the um, attitude majority have towards religion all right how badly brainwashed they are is seen in for example a viral video of the long-haired blue-eyed white man that was shown in news media some months ago just in 2020 i recall being celebrated in an east african country by church worshippers and their pastors as jesus christ which was in other words it was it was being presented to the congregation and uh, Jesus Christ having returned. I mean, try to educate some of these those involved in such silly acts and, and other acts like skin bleaching, and they attack you immediately with the kind of arrogance and ignorance that's difficult to fathom. The following saying captures it quite well. Um, a person that does not know and does not know that he or she does not know is a big fool. And that's the reality that faces some people. Not all. There are quite a number of well- um, enlightened and uh, very conscious um, Africans in the, on the African continent. So there are some exceptions to this uh, norm, but generally majority are like the way I've just described now. They are like this, however, due to a lack of sociological education about their roots. Like I said, it's not really due to any fault of theirs. Now, personally, I have learned so, so much since 2014 in particular. I had been picking up a few things here and there, especially from people like Fela Nikola Kukuti and uh, Wale Shoinka and co, um, and some other great names in Africa. However, it was really in 2014 I began uh, to discover people like Chancellor Williams, who wrote The Destruction of Black Civilization, Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Ben, and some of the great names, including people, the great archaeologists, the Senegalese gentleman, Cheikh Anta Diop, you know, all the hard work they did. I educated myself through a, proce a, a, a process where I went through a lot of the literature available online, produced by people, like, people I just mentioned, and I discovered so many truths that were hidden from us because most of us did not get the right education. And I had to ask myself, you know, who did this to us? Who who brainwashed us so badly that we have no clue who we are, all right? The fact that we have no sense of our history and no identity, lack of identity, um, is reflected in the self-hate, the unwillingness to unify, and the preference we demonstrate for tearing one another down, okay, as reflected in what could be described as the chronic pull him down. Uh, if I can't get there, you would either mentality that's common among us, okay, and which made me decide to work remotely and not work with so many people uh, by having direct contact with them. You know, to ensure that I could progress towards my goals, in spite of these challenges, I began to study and to reflect deeply until I found a strategy I could use to survive and then also to thrive. And over the years, I've actually evolved that strategy and I found that it works. And that's the strategy I want to now share with you because it has enabled me to cross the borders and go into different cultures and different environments and live with people of different orientations and still be able to come away, being able to win them over, win their trust, and then influence them to change. So, in terms of the strategy, the first thing you need to understand, you have to have the right mindset. So I'm going to explain how you go about having that now. You need to find a way to influence them without offending wherever, whatever country you choose to go to. If you do it right, most people will not complain. Most of the Africans you relate with will not complain. And some may actually choose to listen and change. However, even when you are polite, I can tell you from experience, as one who is an African living in Africa, some may still take offense, singly or individually, as well as in groups especially those that are benefiting from the status quo. So some people argue that we need to have a warrior mentality if we, or like become, you know, there's all these words like being Zen and all that. And people are saying you need to have that kind of warrior mentality to 
implement change, get the Africans to change. Um, however, the true warrior is often not given to hastily adapting combat, adopting combat, sorry, to resolve his problems. You know, indeed, the martial artists, the martial arts preach that the greatest power, okay, one can demonstrate is to be able to win without needing to fight at all. If you go and check the great uh, martial artists, that is what they preach, that you should not have to fight at all, that you can win without having to fight at all, get the, or the opponent to give up or to accept your position without you having to do anything is actually the greatest evidence of your power. So you don't say or do things that cause avoidable controversy in your new country. It doesn't help your cause. All right? There will, there will often be alternatives you can, you can uh, alternatives to conflict that you can uh, explore if you look hard enough. Um, a Yoruba proverb that I really love says, onoka all right? Which means that there are many roads that lead to the market. That's what I think is also a popular African proverb. Now, when you want to influence people, therefore, to change for the better, you need a strategy. Developing a strategy to influence, brainwash people to become woke or conscious without getting a fight from them is important if you, as a conscious black-skinned person, have to live in that society where majority are still asleep. But as often the case, they do not know it. So you're unlikely to get support from the institutions, institutions in such country or the community. Because most of them also, the people that run those institutions or that society or that country, do not know. So you will not succeed in influencing them by being confrontational and combative. It won't help you because if they don't know, they won't see your point. You have to, therefore, look for a way to make the people that you are relating with close ranks with you as black skin people against those who you are trying to show them have brainwashed them and then, you know, try to make a change from there. Because you've got to let them see the people that want to brainwash the black people in, your, in the society you're in as the common enemy. Call them what you will. White supremacists, whatever you may call it, colonialists, whoever. Those people that, by their actions, do not have the best interests of the people in the black society you're living in at heart are the enemy. So it goes with that saying, however, that not all white people have this mental, negative mental attitude. There are, for, for instance, I personally have white friends associates, former workplace colleagues that if I were to meet today, I would be very friendly with and I'm comfortable with. None of who actually has ever I consider racist. You know, they've never done anything to me directly that made me feel that way. However, what we see happening in places like the USA to our black brethren, even in 2020, proves that a significant number of white people still are racist in this uh, current age and time. And those are the ones who make it necessary for us to arm ourselves intellectually to against this kind of abuse. To succeed, therefore, we have to be unified. The enemy has always used divisions amongst us, the cracks in the walls of our relationships to break our ranks, you know, the divide and rule uh, strategy. They've always used it successfully against us. Uh, there's Yoruba saying, again, I quote, um, which means if there was no crack in the wall, the lizard would not have it a means of getting gaining access into the home or into the house. So there's got to be a crack in your ranks. There's got to be a weak link in your chain for them to get at successfully at, at, at you successfully, okay? For them to get successfully to you. And we must always remember that they are skilled in doing this. They've, they've learned where to push our buttons and to make us do what they want. That's why we cannot be combative in resolving our differences or influencing one another. For those of you that are coming into the continent and trying to settle down, Therefore, you have to understand. You have to look for a way to collaborate. All right? You look for an opportunity uh, to connect emotionally with those you are living with and help them to see where they are going wrong, if, you, if at all such a thing occurs. All right? Um, if not, what's going to happen is that they are going to be manipulated by the enemy, okay, and used against you. Now, when that happens, they'll be effectively like helpless pawns in the hands of the enemy. Your role is therefore, okay, to use your chosen strategy to inform, to educate, and ultimately empower them to free themselves from such manipulation. That process of self-emancipation is one that you must let them go through, however, by themselves. You cannot do it for them. Uh, but Mali wants to stand. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds emancipate yourselves from mental slavery none but ourselves can free our minds you remember the song um 
I would say that for younger Ghanaians in the U.S. specifically, I think, or not Africans in general, I think they need to just try to get back as fast as possible with whatever they can muster because I've seen over and over again in these years that I've been here, so many of them come back and with the exception of that big house, they're actually kind of behind a lot of their peers, believe it or not. And so I think uh, to get back and get back into your roots and get back into your families and make Africa the place you want it to be. I mean, to come back and then just talk about how Wi-Fi sucks or, or this or that is not there. I mean, what, what does that mean?